In Western Australia, Indigenous leaders are claiming hundreds of people may become fringe dwellers in the Kimberley's major towns as a result of a plan to close up to 150 outstations. The West Australian government's planning to cut off water and electricity to the remote communities, partly due to a Commonwealth government funding freeze, but also due to concerns about violence, alcohol abuse and suicide. Bronwyn Herbert travelled to the Fitzroy Valley in the far north of Western Australia to talk to locals about what's going on. We love Brivy. These are the 23 people who currently call the remote community of Breedy home. The number goes up and down with the seasons. After the wet, we come straight out and the people loves it. A lot of bush tucker around, bush fruit, bush veggies, um, heaps of you know, bush tucker like, like the goanna and you know, the fish are biting down the river and that's, that's a good thing about coming back home. The elders built this place by hand on the country where their ancestors used to camp. We planted all the trees with no help, no, with crowbar, shovel, with all the boys. Hard work. Hard work, hard yak, I would you to call them. And... Community elder Justine Brown came here in the late 1980s with her husband, Jimmy Dylan Andrews when there was a push for Aboriginal people to move back to their homelands. We are here in Bunaba country. This is my father, traditional country here. How old would that art be? So it's going to be roughly maybe 30 to 40,000 years, maybe this one here. We like living in the bush. Come out and bring our kids now, get away from trouble. We had to come out here and because now the school People run backwards and forwards, bringing all the kids here. Most of our kids are all here. It's home for their ten grandsons. Wait, wait, Kellogg there, cornflake and milk there. Eleven-year-old Savan Brown loves his life out here. It's the only home he's known. I like living here and playing around with my friends. Play marble. Play marble. Play Casey. Do you like living out here or do you like being in town? Living out here. It's good and no fight and cause up trouble. Yeah. But this community might not be here for much longer. The West Australian government says it can't afford to maintain power and water to all 274 remote communities across the state now that the Commonwealth has transferred those costs back to WA. The Premier has flagged up to 150 communities will be closed. What do you think about the Premier's plans to shut down smaller remote communities? Unfair. Unfair. We like this small community because we enjoyed it and it's a big open place here for all the kids to play, you know. After working hard and doing things here, and you're going to come and close our community down. You're even, I don't think it's fair. We like living at this is a country, you know. It's really, you know, very heartbreaking. And, and you say to the, you know, government shouldn't have done that or going to do that. It's, People go back to their homeland and they get the spiritual healing there from alcohol or something. They, they get a heal out in the bush. Feel upset. Yeah. Why's that? Yeah, I love this community. Because my family here and we do lots of fishing, hunting, catching goanna. Each weekday, Breedy's six children take a ride to school. Good boy. It's a three hour round trip to Fitzroy Crossing. They go to school here, but their families don't want to live here. The town has a terrible history of alcohol abuse and suicide. 
Community leader Dickie Bedford says hundreds of people would be forced to move here if communities were shut down. A place called Janjua. Janjua, yeah. And, and this is where Breedy Mob will, will end up. Already this year, two young Aboriginal people have taken their own lives here in Janjua, adding to the Kimberley region's grim record of the highest rate of suicide in Australia and one of the highest in the world. When we caught up with Dickie Bedford, he was preparing to bury more young people. I'm going to be attending two funerals in a, in a row, two teenage girls, um, as a result of self-harming and, and suicides. The high suicide rate is one of the reasons Colin Barnett gives for closing down remote communities. Yeah, I think Premier Mr. Mr. Whole point when he, he describes why he wants to do this and, and, and links it to 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 the suicides, etc. We all know it doesn't happen out there in those communities. They're generally healthier and happier um, than in town. All, 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 everything he describes and, and which we agree with um, happens in in our larger towns and um, and, and larger communities. And, he says by abandoning these communities, the WA government risks creating a new generation of dispossessed people drifting into towns. And this will perpetuate the very problems the government claims it is trying to solve. I think it's just a complete cop-out for him to use our appalling statistics to bring about these sorts of policies. The most, I think, um, concerning thing about all of this is we've been nowhere in the picture. They've been, they spent a lot of time talking about us rather than talking to us. I mean, it, it's, it's about us and it's about our lives and, and perhaps I think, you know, courtesy call or, or, or just some respect might be the way to go. And the West Australian Premier Colin Barnett declined to be interviewed for that story. Bronwyn Herbert reporting.